Thank you very much um, and thank you everyone for for joining the session. Um, we're going from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. I'll tell you what, I'm already at 7 p.m. tomorrow in my time zone. <laughs> I'm coming to you from uh, from Australia where it is already tomorrow and uh, I'm, I'm essentially at the end of the event and the start of the event at the same time. <laughs> so uh, let's get into this. So my name's Lisa Crosby. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you today about this concept of collaboration first business applications. So I I actually come from, we're in a Power Platform track here. I come out of that Power Platform world and in fact, the Dynamics 365 world, all of these uh, happy pieces together. And we are really seeing, this is a direction that I'm really excited about is how Teams and Dynamics 365 and Power Platform are starting to work together. So we saw last year some stuff around Power Platform with Dataverse for Teams and bringing things in, but this is the year where it's all about Dynamics and Teams. So I'm going to be talking you through sort of where this is at, um, where it's going. I expect there's a bunch more stuff that's going to come out over the course of the year. So this is really a, a bit of a headline on, on watch this space of, of what we're going to, what we're going to be seeing and getting to work with. Uh, this is me. I actually legitimately have a job title called technology evangelist. I've had people ask if that's on my business card. If I had a business card, <laughs> it, uh, it would be. So I work for a partner uh, called Barhead Solutions. We're a business applications partner in Melbourne in Australia. Um, I'm also business applications in MVP. I would love it if you would connect with me. You'll find me on YouTube. I'm increasingly doing stuff on YouTube. I do a podcast with my friend Megan Walker where we talk about Power Platform and Dynamics and I throw in as much Teams content as I can in there too because I love talking about that stuff. That's the Up podcast. Uh, and you'll also find me without a space there. It's just at Lisa Crosby on Twitter and I'm also um, on LinkedIn if you would like to reach out and connect with me on any of those channels or follow up questions or chatter about any of this stuff. That would be awesome. So how many people have we got in the in the room here by show of hands who are sort of familiar with the with the Dynamics 365 sales concept? Now give me a, a like or a love or something in there. You know, we're in Power Platform chat chat. Uh, yes, there's a familiar name. <laughs> who else is familiar? We've got a got a hands up there. Anyone else give me a like? coming from a Dynamics world or are we all more Power Platform people? I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a 101 here because um, I think I think we've got most people probably coming out of Power Platform or perhaps not, not familiar with this. So where we're at at the moment is this idea of, you know, where has CRM come from? What is CRM? customer relationship management. So where we start to talk about Dynamics 365 in the Microsoft world, there's a whole suite of products here that do a whole lot of things. But one of those is a sales application that allows you to do these kinds of things. And this is traditionally what we have talked about in the past with customer relationship management. How do I manage my relationships? I'm a seller. How do I manage my relationships with prospects and customers? How do I do lead management, take in information about prospects? How am I managing my accounts and contacts? What does my opportunity pipeline look like? I need to streamline my processes and I want a 360 degree view of the customer. All of these things are still very much at the core of what a CRM system is and what it does, what Dynamics 365 sales does. But what's what's missing from you know from from this piece there's a there's a big piece missing here in sort of the way we used to think about things um where you know it's all about managing interactions with the customers and traditionally this has been about saying i'm a seller i'm going to record what I've done with my customers after the fact. And this is a screenshot here of, of Dynamics 365 sales. The highlighted piece in the middle there is the timeline down the middle. If you're familiar with model driven power apps, we're in that world as well. We've got this timeline and we're tracking phone calls and tasks and activities and, and other types of things in the timeline there. But all of this is historical record of what's happened. You might be putting in an appointment for the future, but this is just really a, a, a sort of a, a historical record of that activity. So the thing that's missing from this and the way that we've been thinking about CRM is this idea of collaboration, which is very much where we're at in this team's world. And so this is a point at which we start to rethink these and, and working with the Microsoft platform right now and why I get really excited about this stuff is that we're in a unique position where we've got Microsoft Teams and Dynamics 365 and Power Platform tools all on the same platform. Our biggest competitor in this space, Salesforce, doesn't have anything equivalent that's properly connected in the same way. And so we're really starting to see some innovation coming through here about saying, let's rethink this. The way that we work 
has fundamentally changed. The way that we collaborate and work as teams has fundamentally changed. And we've got this tool that we're living and working in every day. And when we start to talk about these types of collaboration in the context of sales, there are all of these things that need to happen. And this is particularly true if you're working with business to business selling or digital selling where there's depth of relationship, long sales cycles, those kinds of things. You need to share knowledge between other people in the sales team. Who else has worked on this customer? Who else has worked on a deal that might be able to help me with how we can do this? What internal experts do I need to draw on? Do I need to go to someone who's a product expert or a technical expert in the team or uh, involve our marketing person or a, or a senior executive or somewhere in there? Do I need approval at certain parts of the process and who are other internal stakeholders? What am I doing in terms of documents? Am I working on putting together a proposal document and those kinds of things? or presentations and proposals to the customers, chances are in a complex selling cycle, you're not doing that on your own. And then also understanding if I'm selling to a customer, what is their interaction with the other parts of my organization and how is all of that working? So we're really seeing now the trends in selling and digital selling are that we've got you know, more stakeholders than ever, both internal and external. So in the world of CRM, and you know, I don't usually put screenshots of Salesforce, which is our biggest competitor on the screen, but I wanted to bring this one up because this is from their website right now, how they are actually, you know, promoting handling this. And this is how we've traditionally handled this in the CRM, CRM world is to say, all right, we bring collaboration into the CRM. So we had that timeline that we saw earlier where we're tracking all of the activities and things that are going on. But when we come to internal collaboration, it's the same concept historically, um, is that you start to bring these things into the CRM as well. And this is an example of, of how that's done, where you're using something like Chatter and bringing it in there. We've had tools like Yammer and things along the way where we bring that collaboration into Dynamics. But this is a moment where we can rethink this, right? Because we've got dynamics, we've got teams, and what we're really seeing together is how can these things work together in a way that gives us a really different experience. And we hear a lot from the product teams when they're talking about this and the marketing teams around staying in the flow of work. So what this means is we say some people in the organization, your sellers are going to be living and breathing in dynamics. That's their everyday tool. They're doing that pipeline management account management, all of those kinds of things. And part of their process is they need to collaborate. And chances are they're using Teams as a collaboration tool, but they're switching back and forth. They're in Dynamics, they're across to Teams. Certainly, you know, where I work, I see this where we collaborate on things and Dynamics is here, and then we go over to Teams to do that collaboration and document generation and so on. So you're switching back and forth. Similarly, the people who are helping the sellers, the people who are putting together proposal documents or helping to put together uh, contracts or, or providing expertise and sharing knowledge, aren't necessarily sellers, don't even necessarily have a Dynamics 365 license. They're working in teams um, and they're working with that, with, with that tool and not going into Dynamics at all. So instead of thinking about this idea that we saw before about saying, how do we bring collaboration just as a record into the timeline of Dynamics, we start to think about how can these two things really help each other and work together? into Teams, in fact, into Outlook as well. How do we bring these things in rather than how do we push that collaboration back out? So I'm going to take you through five different aspects here around Dynamics 365 and Teams and how these things can work together because there's lots of different parts to it and where we're talking about these different types of users, we've got some things that are coming here that enable us to bring Teams into Dynamics, some things that allow us to bring Dynamics into Teams and different types of collaboration scenarios that are really helping with that sales process uh, with these two teams, two things together. So we're going to have a look at these five things and I've got a bit of a mix here of going into a live demo system for some of the things that are available right now. There's a bunch of other stuff here that's sitting on the roadmap. It's like preview March. <laughs> 
So I've got some slides and some concepts here of what's coming, hopefully in the very in the very near future. And as I said, I really expect that there's going to be more on the roadmap in this space because this is really a big deal in saying let's bring these systems together. So firstly, we're going to have a look at how we collaborate from Dynamics 365. So for those people who are users in Dynamics 365, what's their experience look like? Then we'll have a look back the other way. What happens if you're in Teams and how can you see that Dynamics data and work on that from inside Teams. We'll have a look at the experience of working with Dynamics 365 inside a, inside a channel in Teams. Some of the stuff that's coming uh, hopefully soon around unified meetings experiences, so beyond that day-to-day -day collaboration and into kind of contextual uh, data within your meetings. And then last but certainly not least, where we're getting into Teams webinars and the interaction with Dynamics marketing, which is also very much part of that kind of sales process. I will just pause there and see if we've got um, got any questions, Sharon, on that uh, intro concepts around CRM or anything before I start to, to dive into some of this content? No, we either have a very shy audience or you're covering it perfectly. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> That's all right. Look, it's seven o'clock in the morning for some of you, isn't it? So <laughs> All good. All right, let's jump into it. So first one here then is, you know, collaboration in Dynamics 365. So I'll jump in and have a look at, uh, at where this is at right now because we've actually got some sort of live action of, of doing this and I'm going to do uh, two different personas here. So I'm in my Dynamics 365 system here. I am logged in as, um, as me. So this is my login up the top here. I'm Sam Williams and I'm looking at an opportunity that's going on here where we're working across, you know, trying to close a deal here. So we've got a, a company called Trey Research. We're working on um, selling them some sort of coffee machine here, various things going on with this opportunity. And I can see that Molly, uh, one of my colleagues, is the owner of this. So I could be a sales manager here checking in or something like that. What we've got so far, and this is in preview, is this embedded Teams chat. So the first thing that happens here is that we can start a new, I'll just close this down for a second and sort of talk through the thing. We've got chats that are linked to this. So this is actually a, a chat that's already linked. So I've got a chat going with um, another co colleague here, David Mallory, about this. Um, I've got the ability to start a new chat, which I'll show you in a second. And I've got various other chats that are going on. I can also see my channels in here. So we can link up channels to the opportunity too. If I, um, if I have a look at my Teams chat, this is essentially surfacing my Teams chat in here. So we're not moving our Teams data into Dynamics, we're just surfacing it in the context so this is where I'm working and so I can start to say I need to have a chat here with someone about this I've come in and I've found out something so what we've got is the ability to say let's start a chat name here and I can find participants and where this gets clever is to say all right who might I want to chat with? Now I can choose to, to chat with anyone here, but it's actually giving me suggested contacts. And this is starts to be more clever around this collaboration piece in the context of selling. Teams is now helping me to recognize working side by side with Dynamics. It knows that Molly is the owner of the opportunity. So she's an obvious suggestion for who I might want to chat to. I've already got a linked chat as we saw earlier with David and Alex is also a connected sales team member. So if I go in here, we've got stakeholders that um, Alex is, is, a, is a stakeholder in this. So we've got various things in here that are helping me surface up with that collaboration piece who might be able to help. Let's um, let's start a chat here with uh, with Molly. I could add some other people in, but she'll do for now. I can click this to send this introduction message and you'll see what this is doing is pulling out some of the key pieces of information here so that when I'm sending her this chat message, it's got a link back to this record, but it's also bringing some of those core bits of information in here. So I could say here, you know, I was um, meeting with the CEO and found out something like that. Collaboration piece, Molly's working this opportunity. I'm someone else in the organisation who has another touch point and I'm going to send um, that through to her to let her know that something's gone on. So of course the demo gods are not going to be with me right now. Oh, there we go. Oh, good. <laughs> Nothing like a live demo at a live event is there. So then what we've got here is a full featured team chat in the Teams chat in the context of Dynamics. I can go in here. I can use my rich text editing. I can add files. I can use my emojis and give some things in here and that's that's gone. That's gone through to uh, Molly. So if I go through here and have a look at Molly's experience, so we'll switch across and have a look at her experience here, which is uh, 
this one here. There we go. This is now um, Molly in Teams, and you can see that she's got a new meeting, um, sorry, a new chat that's come through. Let's just zoom this up a bit. So this has come through from Sam. This is the meeting with, this is the thing we've just done. I was meeting with the CEO and found out the decision maker has left the account, and there's all the information there. I can say, thanks, any idea who has taken over. You'd hope he would have told me that in the first place, wouldn't you? But that's come in there. I can I can like that message and so on. So from my experience, I don't even have to go back in there. I can actually click through here and open this in Dynamics. We've got something more exciting than that coming soon. But for now, I could do that and I can go back in and see this opportunity from, um, from my side. Uh, and also, if I look at the chat now, logged in as I'm logged in as Molly and see the Teams chat, I'm going to see it from my point of view. So these are all of my chats in here that are, um, that are linked to that and there we go that one's linked to there and I can see that in here as well so you're getting that experience either side um, with those collaboration pieces if we just switch back into have a look at what else is coming here uh, we have got you know this experience of of coming through and we've got this notion of context IQ which is around saying how can we get AI in the context of what's going on so we saw there in the suggested contacts that it was bringing up things like you know the record owner and so on it starts to get even more clever than that where we've got you know he closed a similar deal in the last 30 days someone else has recently added to the timeline so we start to get some real intelligence here that's kind of bringing not just the collaboration into dynamics but intelligence about who we should be collaborating with an AI that's suggesting that in context for us. So that's in preview at the moment and, and some more things still coming there in uh, in how that's working. So that's our sort of first main piece that we've got. Um, oh, we've got some questions here, I think. Um, yes, we do. Sharon, uh, yes, what have we got? <laughs> so will the chat be part of the timeline? I think it's a really important question. Yeah, so that, that comes up all the time. Um, I, I haven't seen a definitive answer on that on the roadmap. I think I think the the idea that people keep asking for that, I suspect we will get there, but at the moment that wasn't part of what's what's available now or been announced. Um, I think we're trying to really rethink that concept of the, the chat belongs to teams, but I hear this coming up a lot and I know that's been passed on as feedback, so I, I think that's a watch this space um, answer. Sorry, <laughs> not sure, not sure. Nothing confirmed, but I've seen that feedback and that question come through um, a lot of times when I talk about this. Okay, and also can we link chats to also custom tables or just the standard Dynamics 365 accounts, opportunities, etc.? Yeah, you can totally link it to custom tables. I've actually done this as a little proof of concept for a customer uh, in the nonprofit space who had a completely custom table and were able to do it. There's some documentation online. Um, there are some requirements about the, the, the properties of the table. You have to have certain things enabled to be able to do that. But then, yes, you absolutely can if the table meets those requirements and it's a couple of toggle switches. It's nothing uh, terribly onerous. So you can you can just kind of get the settings right. And then, yes, so I've, I've done it. Guaranteed, yes, you can. <laughs> Awesome. Stunning. You're clear. Off you go. <laughs> All right. Excellent. OK, so other things we've got here is to sort of go back the other way now. So we've seen, you know, collaborating on Dynamics data in Teams where I was able to say, you know, I'm Molly, I've received that in Teams and I could click through and have a look. But now we go one better. This is this is where it gets really exciting and I can't wait to get my hands on this. I've only got a screenshot here because this is something that's not um, not quite yet available. So this is a concept of the Microsoft Loop components. So we've actually got Microsoft Microsoft Loop in Teams at the moment where you can go into your Teams chat and you'll find the Microsoft Loop icon if you've played with it. And there is another session here at Teams Nation. I'll give you the, the link in a moment if you want to learn more about Loop. But you can go in and actually create what is a dynamic card that people can edit. So at the moment it's there in Teams, but what we're going to see is this being connected to Dynamics 365. So this is where we start to say, let's bring the business system into the collaboration tool. So instead of, you imagine Molly now receiving that message, instead of going, oh yeah, I've got that little thing with five lines in it and I can click through and open it in Dynamics, the experience now will be that I get this beautiful thing. So I've got all of the details and this is editable and it's live. So this is not like a copy paste, like the other one of just like, here's a static piece of information, but this is now 
a, a card that's connected live to Dynamics. So if I were to go in here and say, I'm going to edit the budget amount or update the customer details or whatever, that's actually genuinely like a window through into editing it in Dynamics. Or if something changes, I would see it there. Incidentally, we'll be able to do the same kind of thing in Outlook. Uh, so that's going to be, uh, you know, like a massively exciting um, a piece of of that um, of what's going on there as well. So. Microsoft Loop Components. Um, if you want to learn more about Loop Components in general, not specifically to Dynamics, that's a whole other piece. Uh, Matt Wade has got a session um, coming up later this afternoon that you can go and check that out. Uh, but we're going to see some stuff coming through with enabling that for Dynamics and having that experience as well, which for those of us on the business application side of the fence is going to be <laughs> it's going to be amazing. All right, uh, any questions about Microsoft Loop? I'll, I'll leave that there for a second longer if you want to make a note of, of Matt's session. Anything else about Loop? Has anyone anyone give me a give me a, a like or a love if you've played with Loop or, or seen that? It's going to be um, that's going to be a big game changer for us, I think, across a whole heap of things. No one go check. Oh, there we go. There's a couple there. Excellent. So go check out Matt's session and learn more about Loop. That's one of the most exciting things uh, that we've got coming through. So then the other thing we can start to do is to say bring dynamics into your channel. So let me just go back across into my uh, demo system here and we'll bring um, we'll bring teams up in here and go into the the channels and things. So this is where we can do something else instead of saying, okay, we're collaborating on things in a chat. But if we're doing something more generally here, we could have a, you know, we could have like a key account, a customer that we work with a lot. Maybe we've got ongoing projects or ongoing work with this customer and we're working with them and we've got a team set up for all of the things that are that are going on with that. What we can do is actually bring dynamics into Teams in this way, which is to basically surface that whole thing. So I think, you know, with the Microsoft Loop components, we might see that changing a little bit more towards that. At the moment, we can bring this in and this is basically bringing that Dynamics experience inside Teams as well, where we've got the full record of things that we can work on. Uh, we can edit all of these things. We've got our process bar across the top. So all of that happens there um, inside inside Teams. We can actually even have a, um, a Dynamics 365 app on the, on the site panel here we've got the various power platform things but you can even have that on the side to essentially open the whole of that in there now the other thing that happens here is that where we're working with files so if i go into this opportunity here we can have related files so we can go and have a look at these related documents let's just uh, close that one down and i've got various documents uh, not with this one let's go back to the same one so we're looking at the same thing so we'll just go back into opportunities and this is my Ah, uh, Molly, sorry, I need to be Sam, not Molly. Let's do this one again. So we're going to go back and have a look. Close that one down. Uh, it was our community portal for Ingenious Inks. And we'll bring that one up in Teams as well. All right. So what we've got in Dynamics is that we can have related documents. So we can come in here to this opportunity and I've got various documents associated with this and this is stored on SharePoint as a as a related um, related documents here. We've got proposals and budgets and so on from the Dynamics experience. I can access either any of these things. What we've got on the Microsoft Teams side then is if we've brought that into the channel in the same way, the files in that channel are going to be the same. And what I might do is I uh, will give this a refresh and see if it's going to work for me. Otherwise, I will. Oh, there we go. All good. So I can go in here and have a look at um, at my team. We'll go back into that Ingenious Inks team here, and we've got the the community portal opportunity pinned there. So if I'm working from the dynamic side, I've got those documents accessible to click through there. But because they're stored on SharePoint, exactly the same thing will happen here. So if I'm working from the team side, those are the exact same documents just accessed in a different way. So again, whichever side you're coming from there, you've got uh, you've got possibilities. And then from there, we start to get into something really exciting, which is in preview at the moment, which is this unified search experience. So Dynamics data and Microsoft 365 data coming together so that in Teams, you can do this search experience of typing um, in the in the um, in the search bar there. And you're actually getting search results from Dynamics 365, as well as all of the things that you normally get when you search inside Teams. So this starts to bring your structured data and your unstructured data together. All right, any other questions uh, there? Yeah, about the, we've got one about the, the uh, session being recorded, but I think nothing else yet. You're all clear. 
All good. Excellent. All right. So then a couple of other things, number four and number five here, just to, to wrap us up in the last few minutes, unified meetings experiences. And this is something that um, is going to be this one, I think is, might even have just come through in the last couple of days, I think. So a couple of things, we want to be able to create Teams meetings from Dynamics, so we can create appointments from Dynamics, and we are going to soon have, if it's not there already, um, this little toggle switch here to set a Teams meeting. So in the same way, you can set up a meeting in Outlook and say, yes, I'd like that to be a Teams meeting. We get that experience now inside Dynamics. So when we set that up, we can say, yeah, that's a Teams meeting, and then the ability to click on that Join Teams meeting directly from Dynamics. So that's something that's coming uh, very soon. Someone told me like an hour ago that they've already seen it in there, so I might have been like a day behind in, <laughs> in picking that up for for tonight uh, and then we also have this is coming this is coming uh, soon is this idea of being able to have a unified meetings experience so we've talked about you know collaborating across different um, different things with with chat with bringing something into the team this is an idea here now of I'm a seller I'm coming in and I'm collaborating with my colleagues and we're working together on a customer call this is now the details of the opportunity so you imagine that you're trying to bring in some other experts from your side who need to help you out with this customer call, they'll be able to see all of that information in the context of the meeting and in fact take notes and things in there as well. Where it starts to get super clever is we combine this with one of the features in Dynamics that does what's called conversation intelligence. So sure we can get a transcript from Teams, but from Dynamics it can actually start to do things like pulling out key action points and documenting those things and so on. So Lots to come in that meeting space, which I'm really looking forward to seeing, but sadly nothing I can demo for you uh, live at this point. There's a conversation intelligence uh, concept where we're getting that transcription and it's actually bringing out keywords and sentiment and action points from that conversation. And then last thing I want to talk to you about is this idea of integrated webinars and marketing. So we're focused on digital selling, that whole process of sort of sales and marketing working together. What we've got within the Teams webinar experience here is a, is a connection through to Dynamics 365 Marketing. So what we can do is once we've run our webinar, there's a button here that says follow up with participants. And that does a clever thing of sort of connecting this up and pushing it all across to Dynamics 365 Marketing. So you've got those people stored in your CRM system effectively. You can have a system there where you can nurture after the event and send out follow-up emails and, and, uh, and push that through a funnel. So we're going from marketing qualification through to pushing it through to the salespeople. So what happens then is we say follow-up with participants. That pushes it through as a Dynamics 365 marketing event. You'll see here it sort of pops up. This, is, this event is a webinar created from Teams. Um, it'll sort of have a record that it was a Teams webinar and it will bring all of these registrations in. So we've got all of these people. We can see who registered, who attended, and it will automatically create those as contacts in Dynamics, link them up if they're already there. If we've got these custom registration responses from the Teams registration page, that all comes through as well. And then it also creates segments for you. So it will create things in here to say people who attended the webinar, people who registered and cancelled and people who did not attend and automatically push all of that across, set it all up for you, give you an email template for all of those things that you can that you can work with and also set up journeys to send that out. So there's a link there. Um, it goes sort of back the other way as well. If you're working with Dynamics Marketing a lot, you can set up Teams webinars and Teams meetings from within there and, and push that across. So that's a space where, um, you know, there's a there's a lot going on as well on the, on the marketing side of things. If you're interested in Teams webinars and this sort of stuff, um, I've got a, a video on my YouTube channel that does sort of a live demo of those screenshots that I've just shown you and also um, there's a session coming up again later this afternoon 12 o'clock there on on webinars in Teams so that won't necessarily reference Dynamics but if you want to learn more about that Teams webinar space then uh, I'd encourage you to go and do that. And then, you know, in terms of the the roadmap, you know, I I think I there's there's nothing else here that I can share that's you know this is all the stuff that's publicly available at the moment. Um, 
I'm keeping an eye on the business applications launch event that's coming up in a couple of weeks to see what might be announced there. Um, we've got Charles Lamana keynoting at the end of the day. I have no idea what he's going to say, but I'm certainly going to check it out because <laughs> he's talking about what's new and what's next. And I'm sure he's uh, he's got interesting things to say there. So I would encourage you to uh, to go and, and join that and definitely keep an eye on this space because this is an area that is, I'm seeing huge investment from Microsoft and this idea of, of bringing these two really important things together. I, I think it's going to be, it's going to be the year for dynamics and teams is, uh, is what I'm hoping. So thank you all. I'm, I'm happy to uh, to answer questions and things. We've got sort of plenty of time left in the hour. I'd, I'd put this in as a, a 30 minute session. So I'm on the on the dot there and happy to answer any more questions that come through or, or do connect with me. Um, uh, Sharon, how do we do this now? We want people to we want people to rate and, and, and fill in the feedback. <laughs> we do. And I've put that in the chat. Nice introduction to that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, to give some feedback, to let Lisa know what you liked, what you didn't like. I've got to say that was that was really awesome. That stuff that um, has snuck up that I haven't seen before. So very, very good. Um, I love that stuff at the end about the teams, the webinar becoming into marketing. That's so yeah, cool. Yeah, it's great. Uh, and also it's amazing you press that button you press follow-up participants and it goes tickety 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 tick oh all the people are there the events there the segments are there the emails are there wait what so it's yeah it's, but, it's I mean, a bit of magic if, if anybody else is like me i have to work out how to use marketing every time so <laughs> not, <laughs> not just you <laughs> who do i add to it so to have all that bit done i think it's absolutely yeah. amazing um does anybody have uh, a favorite part of these um features that lisa's just talked about um oh got a quick question popped up there lisa have you seen any ways to integrate channel messages into dynamics 365 not just chats not yet not yet but i think that whole channels part is something that is i'm hoping there's more to come there um the focus has really been on the the chat you'll see the stuff that i've shared about the channels here is still sort of as it was a year ago, like that's not new yet. But when I look at the demo system, there's two tabs in there that are like in the preview, there's the Teams chat, and then there's another tab that's like linked channels. But I haven't seen enough there to, to get a real sense of where that's going yet, but this it's there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, I, 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 I'm, like I'm anticipating more to come. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does feel like they're going that way. Very definitely. Yep. I think it's safe to say without without even knowing anything else that this is a massive area of investment and there will be more. Like I think that there's, there's no secret of like, let's bring collaboration and business applications. Like this is just, it's so obvious and it's such a strong position for us to to be able to work in with this space. But the the details of what that looks like, I'm hoping, hoping more will be revealed <laughs> before too long. And I'm sure you've seen it, Lisa, as I have um, in the commercial world, that everybody is working around this. So it, yes. it's actually going to solve a lot of things that we've that we've all had a go at hashing together <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah exactly absolutely right okay do we have any more questions for lisa Otherwise, we'll let you go and, and get on with your evening lisa all right yeah and uh, you can uh, you fish around make sure you check out those other sessions um thank you everyone for for joining this and um hopefully hopefully lots more to you, you'll find me talking about this a lot <laughs> around the <laughs> around the trap <laughs> for sure this is a particular uh, you know kind of passion area of mine is is how these things work together and, and what we're going to be able to do with it okay thank you very much lisa all right thank you <laughs>